Hello, everyone, again, and welcome to another edition of the Winner Circle Sports Betting Podcast here on the Winner Circle YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe here, Winner Circle, and get us up to here we go. I know the banners now. 14,000 subscribers is our next hurdle. And as always, we are powered by gamblersworld.com. We can find myself, Chip Trimis, 10 other. Top hit, nine other handicappers. There's nine of us. And Doug Upstone wants to say he's over at Doc Sports. And it's Monday, so, you know, we have Chip. We have Doug. We had a um, nice little, short little weekend of action. That's fine. You know, it's all-star break coming out of that. Uh, still two-plus months of baseball left. Special up right now, 429 for the rest of the season. But more importantly, Hall of Fame game. Uh, 13 days away, I believe, here, August 1st. More more importantly? Yeah, right. Is, is that what you're saying? I, I think so. I, you know, 13 okay. days for the Hall of Fame game. An exhibition game is more important than well, a – people uh, love football. They don't love baseball. I'm, like I'm not debating time. football. I'm just asking if – I'm just questioning your thought process. Well, look, you know what? I was, I, I was going to mention college in 33 days, and I've been telling you to take Georgia Tech plus 13 and a half, and the lines move down. Oh, okay. But, you know what? We'll jump right into you, Doug, here, and then we'll get the chip and his fact of the day. Hopefully he has something for a uh, – I'm sure there's something on a random July. Nice baseball fact from 1944. We'll come up a second. But before that. You, before. <laughs> <laughs> but Doug says it's it's preseason exhibition football, which I get. And this is a good little conversation because it's still kind of a late day and things like that. But, see, I think preseason is a good time to make some money because the coaches oh. tell you exactly what they're going to do. I saw something. Yep. Uh, I love how the, the, the newbies in the business, you just found sports betting three years ago and somehow have a degree in media marketing, get on a television show and be like, yeah, don't bet. Pre-. The guy tells you exactly who's playing, who's not playing. I think you have an edge. That doesn't does not mean you're going to win every game. Does not win, or even one game. That doesn't mean anything. But it gives you a better advantage. I mean – if if the we're talking three baseball games today, if if the coaches came in and said, "Listen, we're pulling our lineup after uh, two two rounds through the lineup, we're going to pull our starters, our three, four, five hitters are hitting the bench, and we're going to be a bullpen by a committee. I'm bringing a guy in every other inning after the second inning. That would change the way you handicap a game." Doug, but, come on, you know, what is, no, I, no, no, Doug I, first, I, Doug, Doug I first, think, Doug, Doug, Doug. I, I think ahead, I think Jeff. the preseason. I think the preseason is one of the biggest advantages we have. Not only um, there are coaches that just they let you know that they can care less about winning. They're just testing out personnel. And they're also I think the lines are a great indicator during the preseason. When you see a team who had a, a less than 500 record the previous season, they're on the road and they're favored over a playoff team. They're telling you something right then and there. There are obvious, I think, keys that the anomalies out there. And I just love the preseason. I think it's a great time. Just don't get too carried away with it. Pick your spots. And um, I know I've done very, very well in the past with it. Yeah. And you know what? I, the, in terms of the entire preseason, generally speaking, I agree with you. I'm just talking the hall of fame. Games okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That one, I, that for me, that has no value to it. Okay. Now, I ignore it. I, I, I never I, play I it. disagree a little bit with what you guys are saying is that I think, cause I have won 14 of the last 19 years in the NFL preseason. So mm -hmm. I'm more than happy how things have gone. But here's the thing. I think what you're saying has changed. OK, I'm not saying there's still not information available, but the amount of information that we used to get. OK, in terms of coaches being very forthright. Hey, this guy's playing. This guy's not. I think that's kind of changed some. And I think then the biggest change in all of this is going from four games to three, because yeah. last last year in particular, I, you know, for the most part, you had no idea if the if the team was going to try and play their best game in week two or play their best game in week three. Yeah. And I think that's one fundamental change. Now, I'm not saying that's going forward. That's exactly how it's going to play out. But I definitely noticed that last year about the uh, pre NFL preseason, at which uh, now I did. I did have a losing year. OK, so maybe it was all on me okay, yeah. for that. But it's just something that I seem to notice. You may disagree with me, Doug, and I, I no, I, I agree. I agree, Doug. But you have to intertwine the line as well because sometimes oh, yeah, that's no, the no. indicator. You know, right? And, exactly. Um, oh, I, I, you, I know, you, you can because everyone has access to the same information. We all do. It's how we interpret it, and right. um, you know, teams get. Uh, Sometimes the media gets crazy, gets hot on certain clubs, and and they just run with this club continuously, and um, that always sends up a red flag to me. 
Yeah, like the Baltimore deal seems to be over now, you know, with Harbaugh winning all the time in the preseason. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was right. it was a phenomenal, unbelievable run. We all made a lot of money off that. But the, the odds makers certainly has caught up to that. And we've seen some lines on their games now that are just, well, frankly, stupid, you know, in yeah. terms of NFL preseason. Sean? Right. Uh, f- there was a – FanDuel had this lines posted – for the preseason next week, for the e or not next week for week two or week one, whatever that is, Eagles Ravens at Eagles plus ten, a total of fifty. Fanduel, thank you, thank you for the under fifty in a preseason game, and I'll, I'll take it. I know it's not a lot of money, but I, you call a couple people in Jersey, and I can get a couple hundred bucks down. I will gladly take some money out of your pocket. You're gonna put a fifty up in a preseason football game in week one. Are you out of your minds? But that's kind of nonsense, like. The overreaction stuff, and now you're hearing that Caleb Williams is gonna. They said they're gonna play him in the Hall of Fame game. I don't mind. You want to? I never understood nobody like not playing a rookie quarterback, especially in a Hall of Fame game. You, that's an extra game for you. That's right. a, that's an edge for the Texans and and for the Bears here in preseason. Like those teams, I'm gonna look to be betting on those guys going forward because they had that game under their belt where they got a little of the game speed type plus going on here, right. and. Again, FanDuel opened this total up at 40, July 30th. It could have got anywhere up to about a week ago. Now it's 33. <laughs> Folks, you can bet early. You know, you don't have to wait till the guys get on NFL Network or ESPN and tell you who they like to bet a game. You don't have to, you don't have to do it 15 minutes before kickoff to find a good number. I mean, you just lost seven points because you'd rather bet NBA Summer League or some w- WNBA who scores a first basket nonsense. You're not a fan. No, I, I, I would have never guessed. <laughs> I got 40. You got a 33, but, but you're happy because you didn't want to, 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 to put, lock money up for a couple weeks. I, I don't understand. I don't know. For, for summer league, as you're much right. as exhibition NFL football is one thing. I get it. Summer, you're running about summer league NBA totals because they're in the 170s. Seems like a boredom thing to me. That's what that's that's primarily what I'm thinking on that. Just some people just have to have action. So Listen, I, like that. Wow. Yeah, I was doing like midday Monday, and people were like, "Oh, t- Tampa, Tampa Yankee." I mean, I'm like, folks, it's a random four game series to start the second half. Uh, when do we see a Monday day game? Unless it's like on the Boston Marathon, you don't see it. You don't have to run to bet this game at 1 o'clock. I said you definitely don't have to run to bet the Yankees who've dropped 20 of 30. What do you, you don't have to bet the 1 o'clock. You don't have to bet the Friday 2 o'clock Cubby game either, folks. You don't have to bet the last game on the board on a Sunday night. Whether it's college hoops, you don't have to take, to take Fresno on a Wednesday night at, at 1.30 in the morning because they're playing Hawaii before you go to bed. Find the value. No? Yes. For sure on that. Aye, aye, aye. All right. All right. We, got, we got three baseball games to talk about today. That, that's our little football rant because it's right around the corner. It really yeah. is. It's two weeks away. It's next Thursday, basically, right? Two weeks away. I don't even know. 22 and it's the first. It's close by. Anyway, uh, Doug's got Arizona KC today. I thought it was a good kind of matchup with mm-hmm. uh, KC finding a groove in Arizona is coming out of nowhere. And Chip will be looking at Reds, Braves. I got the late game, San Fran and Dodgers. We'll start with the chipper. Hopefully we get a nice fact of the day here. But Reds, Braves, 140 favor for Atlanta here. Renato Lopez facing Hunter Green. I think we thought he yep. took a loss in the All-Star game here. Plus 125, yep. total is eight. Can't really complain about both of these guys. Pretty solid pitchers. Hunter Green, the youngster. Strikeout machine. Doesn't really go deep. Lopez, we probably talked about Cy Young, except he's Chris Sales res- rejuvenated his career. You got a couple guys in Philly playing well. But, man, oh, man, if they still had Strider with Freed and Sale and the way Lopez is pitching, do you think this team would be 70 and 15, except they are 58 and 38 to the under because they can't hit a lick? Um, what do you think about this game? You're laying the 125 with Lopez? I don't know. what You know, like well, the dog, they, totals, as, go for it. They, they just put two more guys on the DL yesterday, in, including Freed. But um, before we go on, I'll let everyone know that at gamblersworld.net, 
I'm 10 1 with my last 10 power plays, which I have one game listed tonight and 21 and 5 overall with my Mega Buck plays. This game's had a lot of interest to me because Cincinnati's been one of the most disappointing teams this year. Last year, they led the major leagues in one run victories. This year, they're last in one run victories with the most losses. Hunter Green did take the loss in a World Series. He's got electric stuff. We've talked about it. He's only given up 78 hits. 78 hits in 110 innings with 126 Ks. And Lopez on the other side, maybe he doesn't, not a fireball and does it the same way. He does have 96 Ks in 96 innings, and his ERA is 1.88. Um, I think Atlanta has the edge here. I mean, I think Cincinnati has the edge here, believe it or not, coming off the horrible series at Washington. But I just think the Braves are just so beat up right now. Um, Lopez has been great for him, but I'm going to take the dog with Cincinnati. The, um, the Braves did win five out of six against this team last year. But um, Hunter Green is 1-0 against Atlanta. His ERA is close to five. There's not much to go on there. Just that I'd like to see Green bounce back from the performance in the All-Star game, and that's one of the reasons I'm looking forward to Cincinnati here. All right, Reds plus a buck 25 with Hunter Green. You know, you mentioned them going from best to worst in one run differential winning games. Yeah. Uh, that that probably explains why they're sitting in last place in the NL Central. Like right. you win half of those games, and here you might be three games back instead of ten back. Uh, I, me, I would probably lean under here, but official Reds from Chip Doug. What do you think about this game? Any any thought on? I'm it? I'm exactly with Chip on this one. Uh, you know the, the the Atlanta didn't look good. Also in beating, I mean they should they should have gotten swept. Okay, A two to nothing. In, on the first game on Saturday, the Cardinals were ahead. Uh, uh, Michaelis was pitching great. They took him out in the seventh inning, brought in a reliever, two-run homer, tied the game, hit a home, and scored a run the bottom of the tenth. So uh, Hunter Green is having his best season as a pro, 334 ERA. Most impressively, though, the whip, 1.11. So that yes. tells me he's a different pitcher this year. On the road, he, he's excellent, 253 ERA, and his on-base percentage – is a ridiculous 160 okay so far this season so he has just been great Braves offense hasn't been good all year as Chip just mentioned it got weaker with more, more guys going on the yeah. uh, on the IL Ronaldo Lopez great story you know 188 ERA for a guy that was really pretty close to being out of baseball in some circles but if you look at his his non-traditional stats this guy, to me, is, is just screaming second-half regression. I think it starts today here. And this one, I like Cincinnati, too. Yeah, he's one of the guys, I think, we've talked about Louis Hill, Sanchez and Suarez for Philly, Lugo, I mean, maybe Crochet, guys who have pitched way above their baseball cards. They're going to hit a – whether it's a game or two or a month little hiccup, they're going to come back to the pack a little bit. But yep. I, I agree. Reds plus 125, official play. Here at gamblersworld.net and the Winter Circle Podcast. Next up, we got uh, Doug. Diamondbacks Royals. Oh, my goodness. I gave the wrong one out there. Let's hopefully nobody saw it. Here we go. Diamondbacks and the Royals. Raggins and Diaz, a near 150 face fave for Cole Raggins. I love Cole Raggins. I have, I wrote them down here. 30 to 1 Cy, uh, 30 to 1 most Ks, 12 to 1 Cy Young. Over 11 and a half wins and a Royals 73 over win ticket. So, uh, same to say, I'm invested in Kansas City and this guy in particular. He's six at six. The guy's got seven no decisions of games and giving up three runs or less. What's going on here? Are you kidding me, Raggins? Uh, Yober Diaz, not bad in his starts. Arizona, shockingly, they're like the number two or three hitting team in baseball. I'm like, where did this come from? As bad as they were, I'm like, oh, I, I can't get behind this team. There's no pitching, they haven't been hitting. Yet here they are. I think they can make a move in the second half after talking to some people. Uh, shocking World Series team last year. Are they going to gear up for a second half run? Does it start here against a tough Kansas City team who's one of the best at home? Chip, what do you got? In, in this one, uh, what I'm looking not at. Chip, Doug, I'm sorry. Yeah, Doug. <laughs> I, mean, yep. See, I mean, both teams are just a couple games uh, out of their wild cards in their respective leagues. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're right there. Uh, the Kansas City 17 to 3 over the White Sox for the weekend. Easy sweep for them. Diamondbacks should have had a sweep. Now they won the first two games. They had a one-nothing lead yesterday in the ninth inning, gave up the tying run. And then they walked off with the Cubs, okay, on that one to lose to, on, to that game. And 
I guess let's just say that's fairly typical because this is the number 26 bullpen in run prevention in Major League Baseball. Uh, you know, uh, Yilber Diaz, really good start it, since coming up. Two starts, six innings, one run each game. One difference. This is on the road now, not at home. So he's going he's going away from what he uh, normally does. You know, uh, Sean mentioned Casey's home record, 34 and 18. Tough to beat. They just swept the likes of the White Sox. Royals, number two offense in baseball at home. And they're going to trot out Reagans, as, as Sean mentioned. And this one, now the, here's a somewhat interesting part. Diamondbacks are actually one of the best hitting teams against left-handed pitchers. Yet the record is only 15 and 20. So what's the problem? Well, it's been the pitching, and in particular, relief pitching. They've had games they should have won and could have won. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and create a little value here by taking the Royals on the minus one adjusted run line here. So if they win by one, I get a push at least, okay, in this one. But I take the juice all the way down to 113. So I got Kansas City minus one on the run line for the show today. I like it. Chip, thoughts? My thoughts are, first, it's a pitching matchup. Um, Diaz, like Doug had said, two two outings, one run, six innings, and four hits in both those outings, both at home, like he also mentioned. And his Roggins, it's just been outrageous. 141 Ks, 117 innings. They sweep the White Sox 17-3, but now they have to play a major league team. And um, I, I think that the um, the scoring is going to be down here. I'm looking at the pitching, and, and you guys gave me great stats on Arizona's offense and Kansas City's offense at home. And yet I still, my instinct tell me this game is going to go under the total because it is this pitching matchup. Uh, Diaz is fresh and young and the Royals haven't seen him. The thing that bothers me is Bobby Witt keeps getting three, I think it's Bobby Witt, gets three yeah. hits a game every time out. And uh, that's hard to overcome. But, uh, I, you know, um, thank goodness you didn't make me make a selection on this side, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this game under. <laughs> uh, listen, I 145, 150 is, I don't, I'd rather not. I'd rather go jump into the wrong yeah. line. Adjusted run line at one, a minus 115. You really can't, you know, uh, one is a push. You can't really go wrong with that, right? I mean, even if you went no bottom nine, you might be able to go around the same kind of thing, but maybe a little more juicier because, you know, it's just a win as, you know, they get the five four and, and it's not a push, it's a win. But yeah, I, and I believe it or not, I'm, I'm with you on like, think about a little under action here because as good as Kansas City has been with those splits. A lot of that was early in the year. Like they were really putting up some crazy numbers at home, hitting a lot of bad pitchers. Um, but again, as the season gets on, guys kind of adjust. We talked about Lopez and other pitchers coming back to the norm. You're not going to hit 330 at home all season, Royal fans. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so yeah, I um, listen, good for them. Sweep the White Sox, a team you're supposed to do that to, right? If you, if you want to make right. the playoffs and you're not a really good team trying to get better, you have to do that. The Cubby loss, that's all right. You took two out of three on a road. The Cubs are really in a spot where they had, a, you know, our season's on the line. Are we going to be sellers at the deadline? Are we going to – we're only nine back. We could still kind of make a run. It's Nobody's running away with the Central. Uh, not a bad loss. I don't think that's a bad loss for them there. I mean, who's who's that, Aside yesterday or Steele? Who pitched yesterday for them? Aside. Yeah. Aside. He, he's, oh, no, he's, no, 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 the other guy. Aside pitches tonight. No, no. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The lefty. Um, not what not Hendricks. Was it Hendricks? No. No, no that he was pitched bad. against Gallon. Steele, Justin Steele. Was it Steele? No. It there, doesn't make it. There's the other, uh, I, I We're running out of cup pitchers. Oh, Imana. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He might have been yeah. the best one out of the bunch. Like, how good has that guy been? So, again, team's not hitting whatever. Well, we're not even talking about the Cubs. Sorry, Chicago. Your pizza's crap, and the Bears are going to win five games this oh. year. So, take that. Oh. Take that, Chicago, with the with the cubby with the cubby World Series behind Doug. <laughs> Brutal. Oh man, where I gotta find my game up here. I, I'll, I'll have to. I should invite you to come up to Chicago sometime. And then uh, this that piece is way better than you think. Well, you're an Easterner though, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> All right, I got some late action here. We got the Giants and the Dodgers, and the funny thing is that it was the. Dodgers not having a pitcher listed because San Francisco is normally the team that's got the TBDs rolling over the place. But we have Blake Snell, a Blake Snell Snyding, second, uh, now his third start back from the injured list, facing River Ryan, not River mm -hmm. Phoenix. He's long gone. River Ryan, though, uh, laying a buck 120 here, total eight and a half. 
He is their number four overall prospect in the Dodgers system here. So you think, all right, you know, Dodgers have been pretty good with their minor league pitchers, right? We've seen guys come up, Stone, Sheehan, May, Anderson, who's over in L.A., uh, the other L.A. team, Gosling. But like all of their pitchers, this guy in 2023, 23 games, he's had 22 starts, not one more than 78 pitches, not one more than five innings pitched in those games. This year in AAA, five starts, 16 innings. So what does that tell me? I'm going to get a short start from this guy at most, what, four plus off of a Sunday night wild game. I had a couple wild games versus the Red Sox. The bullpen's a little used up. I don't think it's that good anyway. Um, but here come the Giants. Blake Snell's I, – I, I hate saying he's back after one start, but you expect him to be bad early in the season like he has been. His first start back from the injured list, he had, what, three-plus innings? His last start, though, this is what I'm looking at as I'm back, seven innings, eight Ks, a hit. Looked pretty. Blake smells the Cy Young kind of guy who shows up you know, for half the season. I'm going to get that guy. I'm going to take the under in this one. Give me the under eight and a half because the Giants, 3-2 win yesterday in Colorado, but lost 4-3 to three in seventh inning. So they're not hitting. I don't expect them to turn on, just like I don't expect the Braves to start turning on hitting just because they're facing uh, some random pitcher. I think the Dodgers are going to get a solid little outing from this guy in his three, four-plus innings, whatever he goes. The bullpen, as questionable as it's been for them, I don't mind. Eight and a half runs, way too many. Snell will come in and shut down. The fact that Otani Ribby prop, something I like to look at, is a plus over more than two dorms, like a 215 for him to get an RBI. Tells me all I need to know. Snell's going to come in here, shut things down for seven plus. Dodgers are going to throw their junk ball at the Giants who can't hit the broad side of a barn. Give me the under eight and a half. Doug is shaking his head at me like he's like, you're crazy for thinking that. What do you think, Doug? You don't agree with my uh, under eight and a half? Okay, I'm not going to go. I'll I'll think you're crazy about the exhibition thing, but I won't call you crazy here, okay? All right, so I'll let that one go. But I'm going to disagree with you. Okay, All right. This one. All right. So uh, now, I, you know, I think I think you're right though on Snell. I think Snell is kind of getting the adjustment going now. Yeah. Uh, you know, one hit. I ain't saying back after one game. Yeah. Buddy. Yeah. I'm not, I, I mean, I'm not saying that. His either, track but. record says this is kind of how he does things. Right. Exactly. It's. It, but I I do like the, the Dodgers offense though. Twenty runs against Red Sox pitching. That's that's pretty good. So I think these guys are swinging the bats right now. Ryan River, 222 ERA uh, in eight minor league starts this season uh, overall. Not good, but, you know, and the Giants just hit poorly at Coors Field, which is actually hard to do. Yes. But these two teams are eight and two over, okay, in their last 10. So I think the Giants bats, I'm sorry, I think the Giants bats heat up. I think the Dodgers bats stay hot, and I'm going to go over the eight and a half. So the, the official play is Sean's, just make sure everybody knows that. But just uh, – there's, uh, you know, I, I guess maybe maybe I miss Ross. I need somebody to disagree with uh, on this. Well, I was going to say, cause Ross, because sometimes <laughs> people get upset when we're all on the same sides. But, I mean, sometimes it could, sometimes you want – the purpose of the show is you get three different opinions of people's thoughts on the game. Right. And even though we're not – our official plays are we each get a game, but it's good to know how somebody else is, looks at a game. That's what yeah. you, you want. You want different thought processes because if you liked what I liked, you'd, you'd automatically – your brain's going to say, oh, Confirmation bias. I'm with you. I'm with Doug. I'm with Chip. Whoever Chip has, let's go. Chip. What is your? Who are you going to lure people well, to today in this game? Well, before I get to the Giants and Dodgers, I want to get to July 22nd because I've told you how Cy Young was dominating baseball in the early years. On this date in 1923, Walter Johnson was the first man to record a 3,000 strikeouts in Major League Baseball. But then I got some interesting things from, from this point on. In 1963, this is the day that Sonny Liston knocked out Floyd Patterson for the second time in the first round. Patterson in Las Vegas after a fight never even bothered to shower, just put on his pants and his shirt and left it at a convention center in Las Vegas. <laughs> and that's the truth. And also in the state in 1994, it's when O.J. Simpson claimed that he was absolutely 100% innocent. And in 1997, this is an anomaly. The, if it does not, if the gloves don't fit, you must acquit that. that well, that was he was actually making his, um, stating whether he was innocent or guilty at the time. His plea was that he was 100% not guilty. 
But the more interesting thing is that in 1997, Greg Maddox complete, pitched a complete game with 76 pitches. <laughs> and, if Dave Ka- and if Dave Cash was his manager, he would have yanked him out in the seventh inning because he thought he was tiring. So, um, I mean, that's just the way it is in Major League Baseball today. As far as Giants and Dodgers are concerned, going back to an old rivalry, I know this is a game the Giants always look to play. Blake Snell has had two good outings without giving up a run since he went on the DL. And I, would, I had this Padres the last, I mean, the Giants, last time he pitched, he didn't get the decision, but the Giants did win. I look for that to continue here. I think he's going to be able to shut down the Dodgers. And like you said, the Giants hitting is so weak. I think the way to go is to play this game under. And um, that's how I see it. You know, the last time Snell faced the Dodgers, he went five and a third, giving up one hit. And that was in the World Series when he was pitching for Tampa Bay. I'll play it under. There we go. No, the chip coming in the voice of reason, breaking up the <laughs> the one one tie, the rubber match. So official plays. I'm on the under eight and a half here in the Dodger game. Chipper is going Reds plus one twenty five. Doug run line alternate run line basically the the minus mm-hmm. one at minus one thirteen. Now um, we mentioned before you can find me and Chip at gamblersworld.net. Doug is over at Doc Sports. So, Doug, how you been doing over at Doc, and just in general with your baseball? Yeah, I know you're well, not been any Copa soccer. I haven't. Been, yeah, I'm not a soccer guy, but I, I, I haven't. You know, you guys have been really red hot. I and I think I mentioned that last Monday, as a matter of fact. That I haven't been red hot, but I've been good. I've been steady. Okay, been making profits. So we're going to just try and continue that, looking to find that magic formula to get hot, and then look to try and start it with a new week to so go two and zero tonight. I got two plays going tonight, so uh, check that out at the Doug Upton page at Doc Sports. Shipper. Well, we're sitting here but going on a big streak in Major League Baseball, looking to continue each and every day. Gamblers.net tonight, a power play, 10 of the last 11 during the month of July. Nice. There you go. I think I'm 10 and 4, my last 14 of baseball. Overall, again, I'm like I'm like Doug. I, I the, the, Not huge runs, but just consistent, grinding away. Slow and steady, baby. Slow and steady wins the race. And as always, the three seven thirty eight packages guaranteed at gamblersworld.net. So, if we do not show a profit, you get a credit, and you could jump on somebody else who's having a good run or stick to who you chose. And more likely than not, the worm will turn, the win streak comes, you're in the plus money. Voila, you're a winner. And, of course, the 30-day package, you're going to get some football in that, folks. You'll get football in that 30-day package. Um, before I get out of here, i got to find my little – 14,000 subscribers. We're closing on a 14. So I, we can do that by, by, by football season September. But I want 15 by the end of the year. That's my goal. So please hit the like button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Winter Circle. Head on over to gamblersworld.net for premium and free pick content as well there. For Chip, Doug, and myself, happy Monday to you. I'll be back tomorrow. With some baseball for you. Solo. I'm a solo guy tomorrow. Ride it solo. So I'm sure a lot of people are like, forget, I'm not going to watch you, Higgs. (laughs) It's all right. Leave a comment. You got something to say. See everybody tomorrow. Good luck.